Hi, everyone. I'm Todd Rossnagel, Director of Communications for the Louisiana Conference. Thanks so much for joining us. It is Saturday, August 29th, and we wanted to come on the air, so to speak, on this Saturday and answer a question that uh, we are all asking and uh, we are all wondering to ourselves. And that question is, how can we help? How can we help the residents of Louisiana who are um, in crisis mode, who are responding to Hurricane Laura? How can we help those who need help so, so badly right now? Um, and so to do that, I thought it would be a good thing to, to communicate directly with the people in the know, and that's Reverend Elaine Burley, uh, Office of Missional Outreach and Engagement. She's going to join us along with Reverend Bob Dyke, who is the conference ERT coordinator, also uh, pastor at Grace United Methodist Church in Ruston. And so we will bring our guests in. And um, I think the first question, uh, the first response, I guess, uh, that I know all of us, we've, we've all talked about this, the number one, there's two fantastic ways to help. Number one, we need your prayers. Um, let's never underestimate the power of prayer. In fact, um, we have a list of churches who are affected on our website, and we've received word that people are using that as a prayer guide, uh, going over each of those churches and holding them in prayer. That's a fantastic way uh, to hold our conference uh, in prayer. So you can check that out on our website. So never underestimate the power of prayer and never underestimate the power that your financial donations, uh, uh, the impact that your money will have on the Louisiana conference. And so our give portal is open and ready for your donations. Um, and that is on your screen and you can give um, and give as often as you would like, uh, as we need it for the months and even years to come after Hurricane Laura. Reverend Elaine Burley joins us along with Reverend Bob Dyke. Um, Elaine, uh, let's start with you. The question, how to help. Um, a lot of individuals are wanting to go to Lake Charles and help. What is your response uh, to, to folks who are just itching to get over there and help? Todd, there is going to be a time where we're going to need a lot of help in Lake Charles, but it is not time yet. The um, emergency uh, responders are still trying to clear roads. They are still in search and rescue mode. And to be there in Lake Charles right now would be in their way. So we're asking people to wait. I promise we are going to let you know when we need you. We're going to put up information on our website indicating when it is time to gear up to go to Lake Charles. And we'll tell you how as well, how to register and what kind of responsibilities we'll have when it's time to go. Um, Bob, you um, will probably be dealing with a lot of the individuals and a lot of individuals who are going to register to, uh, to volunteer. Um, what kind of work can we anticipate in the coming weeks or months ahead as you look at Hurricane Laura? Well, first, ERT stands for Early Response Teams. We go in after first responders. We work with local authorities. They know we're there. They know who UMCOR is and who the United Methodist Church are, uh, is. And we do damage mitigation to make properties safe, sanitary, and secure for homeowners to return. To make them safe, sanitary, and secure means uh, debris removal, damage mitigation. Uh, sometimes it's it's limbs from the yard. Um, we may do some muck out work. Uh, we, we uh, debris removal, uh, unloading supplies. Sometimes ERTs are asked to, uh, to pair up with a, 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 a truck or a trailer coming in full of materials, manning a distribution center. So there, there's something pretty much for everyone. There are some skilled areas and, uh, and, and things that take a little bit more like chainsaw work. We only, send chainsaw teams in that have our ERT chainsaw training, but we need people to work alongside them, pulling out limbs and those sorts of things. Elaine, as much as we said that, uh, and are currently saying it's not the time to head to Lake Charles, 
um, to, to volunteer. We are asking for people to register to volunteer in the future. We will have that link on our website. We encourage you to go to that link and register to volunteer. Elaine, um, give our folks at home uh, an idea of, of what kind of information we're trying to gather and then um, what we're going to do and how we may reach out to that individual. Because to say that the, the response is strictly in Lake Charles, it's going to be throughout the entire state. So no matter where you live, uh, you might have an opportunity, even in your own backyard, to respond to a need across the state, right? Absolutely. We're going to be opening up several uh, disaster relief centers throughout the disaster zone, actually just outside of the disaster zone. Because the infrastructure of Lake Charles cannot support that right now, our first disaster center is going to be in Lafayette at Asbury United Methodist. And we'll be, um, I think, we're probably going to have one in DeRitter shortly and several others, hopefully. And there'll be a lot of work to do there. We're going to receive um, supplies and need to distribute them from there to the disaster zone. We'll need people to come help unload trucks and then organize the, the supplies and then give them to the teams who are heading into Lake Charles. We're going to need people who can track volunteers and call people and say, we need this today. Can you come and help us with this task? We're going to be having volunteers sleeping at our disaster relief centers. So we'll need folks willing to cook and feed those people. There's going to be a lot of opportunities. And by registering, you're going to give us um, information that says I'm interested. And this is how you contact me. So another follow-up question that a lot of people are asking is, um, I've got a bunch of supplies. I've got tarps, I've got generators. Um, we know we don't need clothing, please. Right. No clothing. Uh, we, we do not need clothing. I think a lot of people understand that now. Um, but you still have to uh, remind people that we don't need clothing and don't want clothing. Um, uh, but there is a, uh, a semblance of, of some sort of uh, supplies that, that are going to be in need that people may have their hands on. And we're going to have that list as well. Um, is that, that could jog people's memories as to, as to how they can help as well, right? Absolutely. Um, there is a list. Um, there's a top 10 list of the things we need most. And that list will change periodically depending on the supply that we have at our distribution centers. But there is plenty of things that people can donate that will really help relieve the suffering. Um, Bob, I know you just returned uh, from Iowa, correct? You were, uh, you were, you were involved in a, an early response there. And then I know that um, literally as you were responding to a need in the state of Iowa, this was happening back home. Um, and then as you were driving, as you were driving home, uh, all of these stories, uh, were flooding in what's running through your mind as you, as you reached out. And I believe you were working with an, an elderly woman with a tree down, and then this is happening back home. Well, we always ask a simple prayer. Lord, send us to the people and places of greatest need in their lives and in our lives and for your greater purposes. And it opens doors, taking a tree off of someone's house or out of their yard, allowed us connect, to connect with a woman who was from Cambodia. She escaped in 1975 from the Khmer Rouge with the clothes on her back found her way through the jungles of Thailand. And when she immigrated to the United States, she settled in central Iowa. She's connected with the United Methodist Church there, part of their feeding ministry on Wednesday nights to the community. The next day we helped a woman who's been diagnosed with breast cancer. She had no hair on her head. She had just finished radiation. Uh, she's facing surgery in two weeks and then um, chemotherapy. And the fact that the disaster hit her home and she had survived it, we were able to serve her. And then she opened her life story to us and we were able to be in prayer with her. 
that's not somebody we would have just driven up to and made that kind of connection with. Uh, we were pretty stressed out being away from home and having our families back here. When we left last Sunday for uh, Iowa, there was no Hurricane Laura. It was a tropical wave. And uh, we drove back through the rain, rain bands in Arkansas to get back home on Friday so that we could rest and retool for this deployment. Um, we go, we try to go where the greatest need is and it happened to come home this time. Thank you for sharing, Bob, and thank you for your willingness to serve in the Louisiana conference with, uh, the ERT coordination effort. Um, you are extremely skilled at what you do. And so we're thankful for that. Elaine, um, we mentioned at the top that the number one way is, is, is to pray. Number two is to give. Um, give folks at home, you know, we just talked about how there's going to be uh, needs to volunteer all across the state. We talked about, you know, this need for supplies to be housed at all these different locations. All of that takes money and all of it takes a coordinated response, which this money will help. Um, it will help with supplies. It will help with everything uh, that we need to have a sustained response over the next months and years to come, right? That's right. You know, right now we're in the early response phase where we are um, helping people secure their homes and find food and um, things that they need just for daily living in the immediate aftermath of the storm. But once this phase um, winds down, we're going to start gearing up to help um, guide people through the maze of uh, regulations regarding insurance and FEMA grants and SBA loans and helping them start to rebuild their lives. And usually we use volunteers to help people rebuild their homes as well. I imagine that that is something we'll be doing as well. And donations are going to be vital. Uh, donations of your time and donations of your money so that we can purchase the supplies needed to help people rebuild. And rebuilding gives them hope. All right, so let's recap for our audience at home, if you will. Um, individuals who are thinking of traveling to Lake Charles to help pause, um, now is not the time to do that. Um, we would prefer if you um, to, to just hold back uh, and, and give, pray, um, but also head to our website and fill out the form uh, that is that you have a desire to volunteer, that you have a desire to help in the future. We want your information. Someone from the Office of Missional Outreach and Engagement will reach out to you and plug you in where there is a need close to you. There's also going to be a list of needs, a list of uh, supplies, if you will, uh, that we are going to need, that churches are going to need, and individuals across the state of Louisiana are going to need. Take a look at that list, see how you can help. Uh, that is gonna be on our website as well. And then there's gonna be a list of volunteer opportunities that as Elaine said earlier, uh, will uh, change. They will be modified and tweaked as we go forward. Um, I think that's, I think that's the, the recap. Um, did I miss anything, Elaine? No, Todd, I think you've got it all. Okay. Um, and Bob, just so folks at home, uh, and I know you mentioned this off the top, when they hear the words ERT, um, and there's going to be a call out for ERT, there's even going to be a call out for other uh, ERT teams from other conferences as well. Um, we always get somebody who will say, hey, look, I'm, I've got so many years of experience. Um, I'm ready to, to, to grab my chainsaw and go to work. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't quite work that way. There is a process inside our system for uh, the ERT team, right? That's correct. And we find that process to, to follow the best practices, the training that has been uh, given to us by UMCOR for the safety of the, the volunteers, for the good of the people that we're serving, to bring together the people in need with the resources that we have and link volunteers up with, with the, the trained and the tooled people. It's the best for the good of the whole. 
Well, thanks to both of you. I know we are all um, extremely busy. And so I, I, I thank both of you for carving time out of your Saturday to jump on this video call. Um, we will keep everyone updated and we will, um, we will respond as we are needed. Again, uh, please head to our giving portal, uh, www.la-umc.org slash relief uh, and give. And, and perhaps just as importantly, share that link with someone you know. Share that link with someone outside of Louisiana who may have already forgotten about Hurricane Laura. Thanks again to both of you for joining us. And uh, thanks be to God for all of you at home who are willing to help here in Louisiana.